welcome to another episode of Hack a Week. We're back this week with the 2008 Honda Civic. This week I need to do the rotors. I did the front brakes on this in another video, I think over a year ago. This car gets a ton of mileage on it every year. It's my girlfriend's car. She drives 50 miles one way to work every day. So that's 100 miles a day, 500 miles a week. It's a lot of miles. The rotors are starting to feel a little bit of a pulsation, especially at high speeds coming off the freeway. When you exit uh, on an exit ramp and you hit the brakes, you feel that kind of a in the steering wheel. And she's pretty good about keeping on the car and told me about it. Said, you know, I don't like that. It feels a little weird. So can we fix it? And it's the rotors for sure. Got a new set of rotors here. So we're gonna show you how to pull off the wheel, the caliper get the rotor off, put it back on, put everything back together. It's actually a fairly easy job. So let's have at it. Okay, let's break loose the lug nuts first. I see the car's rolling a little bit, so I'm gonna put the emergency brake on just to be a little safer. This car has those little uh, wheel locks on one um, lug nut and this is included with the car so let's put that on there and then we can break that one loose. Okay, now that the wheel's loosened up, we're going to put a floor jack underneath the front and raise it up. I don't have any jack stands handy here in the garage so I'm going to do the old trick I did before of putting the wheel under the car as a little safety measure. And I don't really need to crawl under this car, so there's no danger here involved with me getting crushed by anything. Okay, your car's raised up. I'll finish taking the wheel off here. All right. Comes the wheel. We're going to stick it under the car as a little safety measure. The car is sitting on a brand new floor jack, which is a little more secure than last time when I used the car's scissors jack. You can use that, just be really careful and put the emergency brake on, better yet, chalk the wheels as well. Now, a little trick here to get at this a little bit easier is to go in the car, turn the key to unlock the wheel, and turn the wheel this way so that the caliper is facing out and you can get full access to the back side of it. You can see that's a little easier to get at now. So just like when I did the brake pads before, I have to get in here and uh, pry this apart just a little bit, the caliper. Pretty simple to do really. Just get a screwdriver in there and just give it a little pry. That's it. That's plenty. As long as this is a little bit loose, then we can just lift the caliper right off from this rotor. Let's take a closer look now at what holds the carrier for the caliper to the steering knuckle because we need to take all that off, then we can take off the rotor. Here we can see the uh, caliper from the back side and it is attached to the steering knuckle by these two bolts here. There's one there and there's one up here. They have an 18 millimeter head on them. They need to be removed and then we can lift this entire caliper assembly this way away from the rotor and the steering knuckle. bolts, they're going to be pretty tight, so you'll need a pretty decent sized breaker bar to knock those loose. And they need to go tight when you put them back on. Okay, there's one. There's two. Now this whole entire assembly can be lifted away, like so. Now in the meantime, you could support it right here with a bungee cord, which is what I'm going to do. Um, I got hollered at in the last video with the brake pads a lot. People uh, hollered at me for doing this, letting the caliper hang on the brake line. Yeah, okay, that's maybe not such a good idea, 
but it's really not going to hurt the brake line much at all. That brake line is a pretty solid piece of uh, tubing. It's built for hydraulics. But I agree, don't let it hang on there. I guess that's probably not such a good thing to do. So I can also just tuck it back in here and let it set on the lower control arm. Now let's get back to taking the rotor off. What holds the rotor on are two screws. There's one there and one there. They hold it on to the, uh, the hub. You can use a, one of those impact drivers that holds a bit like this, a Phillips head bit, and when you whack on it, it rotates and it'll knock them loose. Most of the time, these aren't that tight, so you can usually just get away with a big screwdriver, maybe hold it like this with your hand, give it a little wrap with a hammer as you turn it, or you can buy one of these, which is a, a Phillips head in a socket, and just give it a quick, and there it is, breaks loose, just that easy. They don't really need to be crazy tight, just snug, because the wheel actually sits on top of that screw, the rim does, and it holds it from coming out at all, and by the time you tighten up the lug nuts, this whole assembly is just squished right up against the hub. So, there we go. Now, you see this isn't just coming right off. That's, that's pretty common. They usually will do that. So here's the trick. You need to just smack the heck out of this with a hammer, like in between the lug nuts, right here, 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 here. Just give it a few good blows with a hammer and it'll knock it loose. And then, for next time, if you put a little bit of grease on the hub before you put the rotor back on, it will help in the next time around popping the rotor off. So now I need to get a big hammer, give that a whack, and it'll probably just pop right off. Be careful not to hit the lug uh, bolts. You don't want to ruin those for sure. Now when I say a big hammer, this is kind of what I'm talking about. This is a four pound maul. So again, be careful not to hit the lug bolts. About all it took, it just kind of shocks it and off it comes. So there's the old rotor. Now I put the new one back on and uh, put the screws back in. Caliper back on, wheel back on, and we're done. Brand new rotors usually come with an anti-corrosive coating on them. It feels kind of sticky. Sometimes it can be oily. You can see little bits of it right here. And it needs to be cleaned off before you install it on the car. Very important. So uh, you can use like a brake clean or a carburetor cleaner, something like that. I've got some denatured alcohol here that will also do the trick. So I'm just going to put some of that on a rag and give that rotor a good wipe down before we put it onto the car. Stuff should come off pretty easily. Okay, rotor's all cleaned off. I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of grease around here. Doesn't take much, very little. Just a thin film is all you really need on there for next time. Just keeps the rust from making the rotor stick. So that's about all we need to put on there. And then put the rotor back on. And uh, you want to make sure you line up those screw holes properly where they go. Not too difficult to do that. back in there. Get those tightened back up. That's really all you need is about that tight. even do that with a, a large screwdriver. Now we can go ahead and put the caliper back in place. Let's go ahead and do that. Now you may notice that uh, the caliper may not want to slide on as easily. I got lucky on this. Uh, there's not too much wear on another uh, rotor. It was just a little bit out of round. 
but if you can't slide it back on, that's because you had severe wear on the thickness of your other rotor, so you need to pry apart the pads just a little bit. But this one went right on. So now we'll just get those bolts back in, tighten those up, and then we'll be ready to put the wheel back on. Okay, those two bolts are tight. You want those good and tight, like about the same as lug nut tight, 90 foot pounds if you have a uh, torque wrench. Let's get the wheel back on now. I should be able to just straighten this out. Yes. Alright, the wheel is back on. Lug nuts are all finger tight. Let's go ahead and lower the car to the ground again. Now we're going to tighten up the lug nuts to uh, 90 foot-pounds. I have a, a torque wrench here. If you don't have a torque wrench, well, get them good and tight. You'll be able to see about how much I lean into this, how much 90 foot-pounds is. And it goes click. With that style lever, it's just a good push. Be careful on the one that has the lock on it that you don't slip. Push in a little as you tighten it. And we'll go around one more time to make sure they're all tight. The click noise you hear is the torque wrench reaching 90 foot-pounds. That's what lets me know it's tight enough. So that's it. Then I'll move on to the other side and have both sides complete in no time. Okay, that takes care of the right side. Now, anytime you work on brakes, put on pads, rotors, and you've separated that pad a little bit in the caliper, Always remember when you get in the car, press the pedal a few times until it feels firm. You're taking up the slack that we had to make to take off the caliper. With new rotors uh, or new rotors and pads, it's a good idea to take the car out for a good drive, get it up to about 50 miles an hour, give it a good firm press on the brake. Make sure there's no traffic behind you obviously, but give it a few good really hard stops. This helps bed in the brakes to the rotor and especially if you've had older pads on an older rotor, you need to do that a few times to make sure they seat in. As a little bit of time goes by, a little bit of driving, they'll do that anyway. If the pads are really badly worn and there's lots of grooves in them and your rotors were really shot, it's a good idea to do the rotors and pads brand new together. That way you've got a nice clean surface that will mate up against a nice clean surface of a rotor. So that's about it. Now you know how to do the rotors on the 2008 Honda Civic as well as the rear brakes and the front brake pads. Those are some other videos I did. So anyway, happy motoring, and until next time, keep on hacking. Let's go for a drive.